Hi, I'm Mike Massimino. I was a NASA astronaut for 18 years from 1996 until 2014. I spent a grand total of about 30 days living on board the space shuttle in space over two missions. It wasn't always easy on the space shuttle. It was fairly small quarters. There were seven of us, so we had to really be respectful of each other. Like many of you, I'm uh, sheltering in place right now. I'm inside my home and it's, it's kind of like being inside of a spaceship again, self-contained. So uh, based on my nearly 30 days of sheltering in space, I have some tips for you that hopefully will help you shelter in place. Embrace the situation. I remember learning this from uh, John Blaha, who was an experienced astronaut. Well, I was a brand new astronaut. He spent some time on uh, space station Mir. And he described his mission as almost like a first half and a second half. The first half, he was really missing home and really wasn't taking advantage of where he was. And he realized that, hey, I'm here. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm, I'm inside of this spaceship for a while. He was up there for months. And the second half, it clicked. And he said to himself, I'm going to embrace this situation and take advantage of where I am and make the most of it. And he said after he did that, he had a great time and the days just flew by. While I'm sheltering in place, I'm trying to take advantage of the situation, embrace the situation. One is I'm straightening out a little bit more, going through things that I haven't thought I'd ever go through, and, and I'm trying to do that. But also, I'm trying to take advantage of this new world we live in where we're communicating with each other over distance. My, my, I teach at Columbia University. I've been teaching my course online. We've been having faculty meetings online. And I'm getting to learn how to use devices like this right now using my phone and Zoom and being able, I hope it's working by the way, but I, you know, did I, I, don't, I won't be recording, but I'm trying to learn how to use these things now. And I've got young people, some of my students and my kids trying to show me how to do these things so I can continue to communicate and send out messages. And I'm learning a lot. I'm learning all about Instagram and all about ways we can communicate over distance. And I think that I'm, a lot of these things that when this thing clears up and we're able to be around each other again, I'm still gonna be using these tools because they're wonderful. So um, embrace the situation. Talk to mission control and be somebody else's mission control. And what I mean by that is that when I was in space, even though I was isolated from the planet, I did have my crewmates there, but I did feel kind of on my own. And I really felt on my own when I went out to spacewalk. I did have my buddy, my spacewalking buddy, Mike Good with me, but each of us were in our own little spacesuits, kind of like our own spaceship. And during my last spacewalk, I did four spacewalks. On the fourth one, it was the most complicated spacewalk probably ever attempted. We were trying to take a piece of the Hubble Space Telescope apart and something we weren't really sure we could do. Well, I made a really bad mistake. I stripped a, a, a bolt on one of the science instruments and I thought it was game over. I felt like we're never gonna solve this. Uh, I have created this horrible problem and we're never gonna find out if there's life anywhere else in the universe and everyone will blame me because it is a silly mistake that I made. I remember actually looking at the planet and thinking that everyone that could help me, everyone that I loved, everything was down there and I couldn't, I couldn't even get to a hardware store to fix this problem. It was like, I felt separate from, from the earth. But after about an hour or so of troubleshooting the ground Mission Control came up, come up with a solution. Houston, you ready for this? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, man, so you have a go. Here we go. The uh, top half of that handrail uh, was freed by the fasteners being uh, released uh, very easily. The lower one, one of the uh, fasteners did not come loose, and uh, Mike Massimino used... Uh, essentially brute force to remove the uh, handle at the lower portion it is now uh, free and the solution worked and we we're able to get the telescope fixed that day Mass and Blaine, i just want to while you're closing the doors here tell you what a great job you guys did today and i'm forever grateful but there was a time when i forgot that they were there to help me so don't forget that help is always there we're in this thing together and if you're feeling down if you're having an issue a problem you need help reach out and on the other end, try to be someone else's mission control. I also got a chance to work on the other end of it. One of my jobs was to talk to the astronauts in space, what we call the Capcom position in the control center. And I always tried to do what I could to make my friends who were in space feel more at ease, particularly during a tough situation. 
reach out, be the person that people can call for help. Be their mission control. And don't forget, your mission control is there to help you as well. Exercise. Exercise is uh, very important in space. Even on the short missions uh, that I was on. Longer missions, it's really critical because in zero gravity, there's no load on your muscles. You can lose bone mass as well. Bone density can go down if you're not exercising because you're floating around. On the space shuttle, when I was flying, we did have an exercise pipe. We called the ergometer. And we were able to ride that thing to get a little bit of exercise. We also had some therabands that we could stretch out and get a little resistive exercise in, upper body, even lower body. And I got to spacewalk. So we did a lot of spacewalking and that was complete exercise the whole time. Exercise, I think, for our missions was just as important for your mental well-being as for your physical well-being. And I think it's the same thing here on Earth at these times. I think it's really important to try to get your exercise every day, whatever that means. I've set up like this kind of wacky sort of gym in the basement with a few weights and other, I don't have a, I, I like going to the gym. That's not happening. Actually, to be truthful, I don't like exercising at all. Uh, but getting outside, we can still run. We can enjoy the outdoors, take the dog for a walk, take yourself for a walk. It always made us feel great in space. Even just getting 20 minutes of exercise on an exercise bike. So get your exercise. Enjoy the beauty around you. I think sometimes we get so wrapped up into what we're doing, what our chores are, our task, or whatever it is that's occupying our brain, we forget to take a second and look around. And this happened to me on my last spacewalk, my fourth spacewalk. I was done a little bit earlier than my spacewalking buddy, Mike Good, was, was still doing some work near the telescope. And I said, well, I said to myself, I'm going to go to the airlock and start getting things ready for us to go inside. And while I'm doing this, my good friend, one of my best friends, Scott Altman, our commander, comes over the comm loop and he says, hey, Mass, uh, that's my nickname, he goes, hey, Mass, uh, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm inside the airlock getting ready to come in. And he goes, is there anything you're doing now that can't be done later? I said to him, no, I'm just trying to get ahead. He goes, well, why don't you stop what you're doing and go outside and enjoy the view? I want you to take a look around because your uh, spacewalk with Hubble is about to come to an end. We're bringing you in as soon as you close the doors. Okay, thanks, Scooter. He was magnificent. And I thought, that's a pretty good idea. Plus, my commander was telling me to do this, so I felt like it was an order I had to do it. You know? So I go outside of the airlock into the payload bay, and I clip my tether in so I'm not going to float off into space. So I have a tether hook on a handrail, and I let go with both hands. And I just laid there in the payload bay of the space show and looked at the Earth. I think it's really important to enjoy the beauty around us. So take the time to enjoy the beauty. Or if you really don't want to go outside, just stay inside and watch something. Watch a couple Wired videos, something like that. Some of my friends had to have something to do. And our, we got delayed on our landing by a couple days. And I thought this was the greatest thing at the end of our mission because we had nothing to do. For two days, we got waved off because the weather was bad. We couldn't land in Florida. So we were stuck in space. I thought this was great. And I just spent all my time looking out the window, enjoying the beauty of planet Earth. But my crewmates, they needed something to do. They were going crazy. So they decided they were going to watch movies. There was this one point in the mission at, toward the end there where I'm looking out the window. We're coming. It's nighttime. We're coming over Australia. I can see the city lights in Australia. There was a, a thunderstorm out over the ocean. And I could see the lightning lighting up the clouds. It was just magnificent. And right then, one of my crewmates, Drew Foysill, yells up from the mid-deck. He goes, hey, Mass. I go, what? He says, uh, come on down. I go, why? He says, we're about to watch Nacho Libre. You know, the movie about the wrestling with Nacho Libre. And I thought, I thought to myself, there's no way. That, and I said, I'll watch it when we land. I'm looking at something right now. And uh, they were off watching Nacho Libre. And I was looking at the mag most magnificent site that was just outside our window. So my recommendation to you is, yeah, you can stay inside and watch a movie if you want to do that. But don't forget that there's a lot of beauty in our planet just outside your window. Pursue meaningful distractions. So, and I, I, I want to stress meaningful, if, if at all possible. Uh, what we found when we were flying astronauts to the space station at the beginning, I was working in the control center as the Capcom talking to them and they were like, oh, they have a lot of, they, have some, they don't have as much to do here or there and what are they going to do? They're up there for a long time. 
And uh, so there were different ideas, like they could take inventory and count how many bags of ravioli they have left, stuff like that. That's not necessarily very meaningful. What uh, we found was uh, a better activity to do was to come up with a hobby, something that you really enjoyed in your free time when you're up there for that long. So a lot of the astronauts on the space station got into photography. I mean, that's like the, the best thing you could do probably up there. We have some great cameras. You have the most beautiful scenery you've ever seen looking down on our planet. And so they got into photography and different techniques and how to do the uh, time-lapse stuff. So you can do orbits and fly into the aurora. Some got into doing artwork, some got into playing music. But you, you want to have something that you find to be what I would say a meaningful distraction. So find yourself a meaningful distraction. Put the time to good use. Stay connected. I think we have lots of ways now uh, that we didn't have years ago to help us stay connected to what's going on and to each other. Uh, in, in space, we were concerned about being far away and not connected with what's going on with the world and our families. But we were able to do things like email. And just like your computer at home, we have computers in space. I'm checking our flight plans, see what we need to do. And I also can check my email. I've already got some email from my wife and my kids. And it's great to be able to stay in touch with like this. Video conferences and social media. I was the first one to ever send a tweet from space. And I was thrilled that they asked me to do that because it gave me a way to help with staying connected. I could share what I was doing. So I think that that's really important. Check in on people that, uh, that you care about. And also tell them what you're doing. Share your, your day with people. Let them know what's happening. Stay connected. Being back on Earth. An interesting transition. Um, I was so concerned about my mission for so long, for years. And then it, we, we flew the missions. And after each one, I was uh, happy that they went well. And I was a little disappointed that they were over in some ways. And you get back to Earth and you start realizing the things that you missed. And what I thought about when I was away, when I was in space, I thought a lot about my family. I missed things like the weather. There's no rain or wind or snow and, or anything like that in space. It's beautiful, but you, you miss some of those things. And so what I found is after I got back to Earth, I just wanted to be around people. and just was so grateful that I was back and I could be doing the things that I really enjoyed and around the people I really loved again. Uh, I never complained about the weather anymore either. I, I kind of like the rain. We don't have that in space, but we have it here. And we kind of take it for granted, I think. Um, I think this is kind of similar to that. Right now, I'm supposed to be at opening day at Yankee Stadium as I'm talking to you. He's not even playing any baseball games. And who knows when we're going to get a chance to do that. And I haven't been around a lot of my family members. And I miss a lot of people and big public gatherings. Um, I miss all that stuff. And I'm sure you do too. But we're going to get over this. And I, hopefully what it'll do is help us to appreciate what we have during our good times. And remember what it's been like now, all those things you miss. When you get back to doing them, make sure you really enjoy them and don't take them for granted any longer. That's one thing that I learned coming back to Earth. As an astronaut, the way I found the best way to prepare for missions and to do things was to hear from other people that had done them and what their experiences were. So please, we have a comments section underneath all of our videos, and we would really appreciate if you gave us your comments about maybe what you learned from the video, but also how you're coping with your sheltering in place, because we all can learn from each other and help each other out here in this situation. And uh, also, uh, remember, subscribe to Wired. It doesn't even cost anything. You can watch all these videos and you can spend your time in isolation watching a bunch of wired content. So please let us know how you're doing and thanks for watching.